A Law in God's Providence, what a great song to uh, talk about what our subject today. Uh, how God is so gracious to us in leading Kenny. Is that me? <laughs> to choose the, the right songs. Build your kingdom here. What's our purpose uh, as a church? It's to build the kingdom of God. Amen? The kingdom of God on earth, ultimately, so that the kingdom of God in heaven uh, can be enlarged. Uh, we know the great commandment, of course, is to love our Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul. And the great, com uh, the great commission is to share that good news with other people so that they can come to know the Lord our God uh, with all their heart and all their soul. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I want to share with you today uh, the, on this subject, a relaunch. A relaunch. Now, how many of you know much about the shuttle? The shuttle was the first space instrument, the first space vehicle that was intended to be reused. Uh, and the shuttles, and there were several of them that were made, the shuttles were cycled through and made more than one trip uh, up into the heavens, more than one trip uh, up onto the, the, the space station up there. Uh, they were relaunched over and over and over again. Now, I, I did a doctoral project. Uh, I did a project on relaunching the church. That's what I wanted to call it. That, that was going to be my thousand or hundred page uh, thesis. It seemed like a thousand. Uh, it was going to be on how to relaunch a church. The idea was to take an existing church with all the strength and, and all the, the leaders that were in that existing church, and to get that church on fire and committed to the Lord, just like this song said, uh, and see that church take off and really impact its community. Now, I couldn't sell that project. My professor said it can't be done. They said the only way to do it, and, and they, they had their statistics to back it up, so the only way to do it is to close down the old church and then start all over again fresh. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe that God can take an existing group of Christians uh, committed to each other and committed to him and can launch out in a new way, in a new, new enthusiasm with new fuel to impact the world, don't you? I, I believe that can happen right here in this church, don't you? Yes. And so I want to talk to you over the next several weeks about relaunching, about recommitting, about getting on fire as a church for the Lord. I believe if any church has that potential that I've ever been in, it's this church. I believe God has put, gifted this church with some tremendous leaders. I believe that we need to keep our focus on the Lord. And if we do that, God can build his church. Isn't that what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16? Our purpose is not to build the church. Ultimately, that's God's job. Amen? Amen. Our purpose is to remove the obstacles that keep God from building the church. And so, what I finally got through my professors <laughs> was the project that I was going to help train leaders to become barrier-breaking leaders who would remove the obstacles that would keep God from building his church. Amen? Another way to go around <laughs> and to say we're going to relaunch the church. We're going to get on fire. We're going to really make a difference uh, for the Lord. I know it's a snowy morning, and I know maybe not everybody's here uh, that could be here. Uh, you know, last week in our second service, we packed out the place. Had over 100 people here in the second service. Uh, we, we have a space problem <laughs> in some ways, don't we? But, but God's doing great. God's doing his job. We have new people come every week. New people come every week. God's building his church. We just have to love on those folks. We just have to do what Jesus would do with those folks. We just have to get excited about what God's going to do with his church. And I believe, I truly believe, that God can, can launch this church into a, a future that we couldn't imagine before. Amen? Uh, we can see new vistas and new sites and visit strange places <laughs> that we've never been before. I'm not talking about being wildly... Uh, 
out there, theologically or anything like that. As a matter of fact, we're going to look in the scripture today. It says we need to keep our theology straight as we love the Lord with all of our heart, as we see God move in tremendous ways. Amen? Uh, and I'm looking forward to what he's going to do. I'm looking forward to what he's doing now, uh, what the changes I see now. But folks, there's going to be a time, I believe in my heart, that those baptismal waters are going to be stirred Sunday by Sunday by Sunday. That's when I really feel like we're being the church God wants us to be. Now, I love to see Christians come back to the church. Uh, I love to see that. But boy, what really, 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 I think, brings joy to the heart of God and brings joy to the angels in heaven is when people come to know Jesus as their Savior and they enter into the church as committed Christians on fire for Jesus. Amen? And I'm excited that that's going to happen here in our church. Aren't you excited about that? Do you see that possibility? Do you see that God could relaunch our church? Uh, turn with me in, in Revelation chapter 2, please. Revelation chapter 2. I do want to share with you, it's not on your announcements yet, but it will be soon. Uh, our association, Grand Valley Association of Southern Baptists, are going to uh, be having several uh, conference nights. We're going to uh, be together, and, and I'm inviting you. And, and actually, they've invited us to host one of those. Uh, and which is provide a dinner and invite all the churches from our association up and down the valley, all the way down to uh, Grand Junction. Uh, invite those churches in here. Uh, have a couple messages brought by uh, some of the pastors of, of our association. And listen to some good music. I haven't, I haven't accosted Kenny about this yet, but <laughs> <laughs> listen to some good music here, some good music in the other churches that are hosting it down the down valley, uh, and, uh, and just to enjoy. But the, the subject of those is going to be the seven churches of Revelation and how the church needs to be on fire. Uh, the pastors feel like, up and down the valley, feel like God's doing something special, that God's getting ready to make a real difference in this valley. Now, I, I'm talking about pastors all the way to Aspen, pastors all the way down to Grand Junction, to Fruta. Feel like God's getting ready to do something. I, I think God's put it on our heart that that's happening. I think God's put it on our heart to be involved in that as a church. Amen? And so you'll have the opportunity to hear these seven letters. And there will be a pastor who will do a much better job on the church that we're going to talk about in the midst of this conference. So you'll have to come to it to compare, uh, <laughs> compare this message with that message. <laughs> but I believe we're going to hear from God in this uh, time together. But you look forward to that, if you would. Revelation chapter 2, beginning in verse... One, this is the, the letter to the church at Ephesus. And would you stand in honor of God's word as we read it together? Revelation chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, that you cannot endure evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. And you have pers perseverance, and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore remember from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you, and will remove your lampstand out of its place, unless you repent." Yet this I, you do have, and you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Our Father, we thank you for this wonderful message to this church. And Lord, as it applies to us individually, as it applies to us as a church, help us to be informed Help us ultimately to be changed, Lord, by your Holy Spirit's work in our heart and in our life today. Lord, we, we want to love you more than we've ever loved you. Lord, we want to return to our first love of you. 
Lord, grant to us that, that wonderful desire in our heart through your Holy Spirit so that we can fulfill it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, the church of Ephesus is perhaps one of the most famous of the Christian churches. It is in Ephesus uh, that many of the apostles uh, spend a lot of time. Uh, In Ephesus, uh, who Paul helped establish, that John spent a lot of time and Peter spent a lot of time teaching and training and, and helping this church be strong. And it worked. This church became a very strong uh, church of all the early churches. It was a very worthy church uh, to receive commendation. Yeah, that's that's good. That's that's close to what I wanted to say. (laughs) My tongue kept trying to go to condemnation, and I know that's not what I wanted to say. (laughs) Uh, uh, To the church of Ephesus. Uh, this letter begins. Uh, Ephesus was a busy church with high spiritual standards. They could not bear the, the, the witness of worthless individuals or evil people. They wouldn't listen to false teachers. Instead, uh, they had continued in the work of God. They hadn't fainted. They had persevered. In every way, it was a successful church uh, from the human point of view. Uh, matter of fact, if you were to look at all the busy churches, they were perhaps the busiest. You heard about the lady who was considering joining a Baptist church, uh, and she went to her doctor, and she said, Doctor, I need to have a physical. And the doctor said, Well, I just gave you a physical uh, last week, Margaret. Why do you want a physical again? She said, Oh, no. No, I need a much more intense physical. And she says, He said, well, why is that? Well, she said, well, I'm considering joining a Baptist church, and you know how they go at a Baptist church. You know, this was a Baptist church here. They were busy. They were doing all kinds of things. The calendar was full. Lots of activities going on. They were a good church, a good church. They were missing something. You know, and I think we can be a good church. Would you say this is a good church if you've been a part of this for a while? I, I love this church. This is a good church. We have to be careful that we don't miss something along the way. Along the way of us being a good church. I want you to note, first of all, in this passage, uh, that this message is from Jesus. This message is from Jesus. That's important to note. Jesus speaks directly to these seven churches. Jesus, the one who holds the seven stars in his hand. I want you to know Jesus owns the church. Isn't that right? This is his church. Now, I want you to feel some ownership in the church. You know, I once had a member tell, ask me, uh, Pastor, is it all right if I pull those weeds by the door? <laughs> and I said, well, if it was your house, would you pull the weeds by the door? Well, yeah, this is your church. <laughs> Go ahead. You don't have to ask me. Just You might check and make sure they're weeds. I've pulled the wrong ones before. <laughs> and gotten a little dutchy for that. <laughs> uh, but it's, in some sense, we need to realize this is our church. We need to have an ownership in what happens here at this church. But ultimately, we need to realize it's Jesus' church. Amen? Uh, When we have business meetings, I try to start every one of our business meetings with the idea that that I want you to vote as you feel like the Lord would have you vote. (laughs) You know, it's not my opinion that's important. And there are times in church business meetings when I've voted contrary to my personal opinion. (laughs) Because I was impressed that the Lord wanted something done. And even though I didn't think we could do it, I had to feel like the Lord wanted it done, so I had to vote according, because it's his church. 